Running Sentences presents Pirates, Politics, and Potentially Treasure Book 1, Part 6, A Court of Fools Dealing with becoming a representative for the galactic government isn't easy on Cordite, who finds himself with a headache after headache which awaits him in dealing with all things political. That and everybody else seems to want something. This story is written and narrated by Michael Henry. It is a work of fiction. Any names, characters, businesses, events, and situations within this story are products of the author's imagination. Any resemblance to real people, real situations, events, characters, businesses, and or fictional businesses, characters, events, and so on, is purely coincidental. Copyright 2023, Michael Henry. All rights reserved. There were a bunch of foot stomps going outside of the office of the president to the galactic office, and he didn't like that much. It was a distraction from his work and utility. Well, uh, didn't much like it when things like that happened. It was like they were trying to decide if he needed to know what they knew before they inevitably decided the best course of action was not to tell him anything at all and to keep him in the dark. But by then, he would have the need to know and want to know, and demand to know. Though none of this mattered, as the door was thrown open by his personal secretary gossip, a creature that looked like a sloth, according to humans he'd met, and moved about with a similar speed. It was sometimes hard to keep up with her. Mr. President, things are brewing. Like a nice hot chocolate drink or something else? There was an attack on our ships in our safety zone by pirates. He looked at her funny, trying to decide if this was really what he needed to know right now. Usually the military dealt with these things and then told him about it afterwards, which was fine. His mind trimmed over the fact that he'd been thinking about that no one bothered to tell him things and now he didn't want them to. He didn't really care about this news, what was it important? Oh well, that would need to be sorted out and figured out at some point, but now he was being told things. Well, what did they do? Uh, What kind of attack was it? And uh, what's going on that we might have caused this? And uh, I'm not up to date on the latest piracy news, so we'll need a refresher on that as well, I guess. There was a moment of hesitation from Gossip as she stopped to think for a second. The reason he had hired her for the job was her great memorization skills. It often took her a moment to get to what she needed, but that was the cost of things, and the price well worth it. There has been no news about pirates lately, other than the newly appointed person, that uh, Cordite Mercury. As for what, they attacked our fleet ship Cordoba, missiles. Those were easily swatted away, and then we locked down the enemy vessel. It is currently being towed here under guard. Oh, good then. Let the military deal with it. Why do you need to bother me about it? Well, you have the new representative from the pirates. Shouldn't we talk to them about this? Get insider information as to what is up with the pirates? Utility nodded along, realizing that sounded about right and fair, but uh, Cordite wasn't sworn in nor approved by the others just yet. But perhaps they could just have a conversation um, and help figure things out. That would be good. Yes, yes, I'll send for that one at once, I think. Let us chat about how things in the world of pirates work. And is there any other news that I need to be aware of that you're disturbing me about? There is some rumors about the Grogian Empire and that they're sending two of the royal family to work here. Utility narrowed his already small eyes and nodded. There was nothing else that needed to be said about that, because, well, who really cared? His secretary took his nod as permission to leave, and of course she left. Having just settled into his room, Cordite sat heavily down on the bed. He was lost in thought while at the same time trying to take in the simple hotel room he'd been assigned to. It had the usual of what he was used to, a bed, a bathroom space, 
and a desk that occupied some space beyond the bed. He also couldn't deny that it felt like it should be more in here. Some form of entertainment or something. There was a rather rapid knock on his door, which was a surprise as he got up and looked at it. The noise didn't stop and it sounded as if it was at his particular door. He wasn't sure at first if it was or wasn't when he'd heard it. Nah. So he went over to it and opened it. A rather upset looking bottle was pushing her hair out of her eyes as her other fist slammed into his chest, trying to knock on the door. Oh, uh, sorry. What is it? A situation has come up with the involves pirates. Uh, they've done something bad, or bad things, I've been told. I, I don't really know. I wasn't given the specifics of just told to retrieve you and bring you to the palace where you can talk about it. Am I allowed to bring someone with me? Why would you want to do that? A deep look of concern had crossed her face as she said this, and was considering whether or not it was the right thing to do. There were quite a few conflicting emotions that made their way across Bottle's face, as she thought more and more on this. It's the same reason. Any politician has someone by their side to help them out. I don't like going into situations where I don't know what's going on. We will stop just a few doors down and collect a friend of mine from the crew, okay? She was shaking her head now, but as he exited, he was already headed for Francis's room. Bottle would stumble after him, and Francis would join them in short order. The plain grey building that had been labeled N5 on it was what greeted Cordite and Francis as they stepped into the foyer. Shortly behind them, there, and still looking like a nervous bee, since apparently Bottle would change shapes in her nervousness, came Bottle. Guards closed around them and led them to a checkpoint and check-in desk with another guard and a clipboard. Ex excuse me, this is an important meeting and no time for this. Bottle had changed back to her usual long, sleek form. There must be records per government orders. Nothing is allowed to be off the books. Names, please. Uh, Cordite Mercury. The clipboard was handed over for him to sign. My name is uh, Francis Blood. The clipboard that was in Cordite's hands was then turned over to him so he could sign it too. It was then turned over to Bottle, who merely signed it without announcing who she was. Can we go now? What is your purpose for this meeting and who are you meeting? It is an assigned meeting between an X and Y schedule in emergency. That is all you need to know. I think I need to know more, miss. Bottle, who'd been behind the two, stormed her way to the front desk and slapped down her hand. This is government business that can't be put idly to the side. We will be in the conference room that I believe is set aside for these things. She then grabbed the arms of Francis and Cordite to lead them around the desk to the back. There, a long, drawn-out room filled with conference rooms on either side of the hallway lie waiting for them to be used. Barely gotten into the room they'd been assigned to when another bustle of activity followed them in. Security guards moved to look over everything, then even gave the trio a pat-down before examining this and that around the room. It was but mere moments of work, and then they were all clear was given into someone's lapel radio. A few of them left as President Utility marched his way in and went and sat down at the nearest chair. Which of you is the new pirate person who is supposed to help me know what is going on? Cordite raised his hand while Francis pointed towards him as well. The president gave him a once-over, studying pretty much all of his looks before settling deeper into his chair. Well, you know what's going on, so advise me. Um, I don't know what's going on. The only thing I was told that something bad had happened and you needed advice. So, until somebody tells me further, I can't help. Utilities gaze shift from Cordite to Bottle, who had hidden herself in the corner of the room. What is this I told you to tell them? I was briefed on none of the details. There was nothing I could tell. Perhaps you could be so kind, Mr. President, instead of yelling at your worker to just tell us. With that over-exuberant sigh, the President did as much. A quick rundown of what he knew, which wasn't much. 
The only thing that caught Cordite's interest, though, was the captain's name. Uh, you said this was because of a uh, Captain Zoll? There was an emphatic shake, yes, from the president. Sneaking past our guards and got caught. No, then tried to attack us and invoke your name. Who is this person, by the way? I'm, um, you know, we know it's a pirate, but uh, our records are a little short on him other than a few incidences. Cordite moved to sit down and signaled that Francis should do the same, which he did. This, by the way, is Francis. He is my associate who will help advise me. Like you, a good person never goes alone into the dark. We have to have people help guide us. His words trailed off as he tried to think why Zul was doing this. Pirates rarely communicated with one another, and if they did, it rarely happened quickly, usually after the fact. And here stood something contrary to that, almost close to the event. This Zul is under arrest, I take it, and likely faces a long uh, prison sentence, correct? He is headed to a holding cell outside of the planet along with a crew of his, of course. I need to know what he was thinking and why he would try that. Those were things that Cordite would also like to know, and there was perhaps only one way to do that. Excuse me for interrupting, but is there a chance we could actually talk to this captain? No, we, we want no collusion and story collaboration between pirate factions. Well, if that is the case, President, I cannot offer a reasoning as to why he's doing such things without talking to him. But having a small personal history with Sol, I'd say he's doing it for some kind of monetary gain, and probably trying to bring somebody down. Maybe me. Or he's just trying to make a name for himself. A bigger name for himself, now that I think about it. There was a tap, tap, tap noise coming from the table as Utility was tapping his fingers against it. A deep, lost look of thought had come across him as he stared off at the ceiling of the room. Uh, Cordite, I doubt we have much more to say on all of this. Uh, Zol is trying to achieve something, but without talking to a, the man we can't say for sure. It leaves us unable to advise in this matter. I think we should depart. Cordite nodded, but didn't stand up to leave. Instead, looked over to Utility with a curious look. The president still seemed far away, but a little less so at the moment. Any meeting would have to be attended to by two guards, at least, uh, and somebody who could listen in. Uh, that's fine. We're not lawyers, after all. I'm merely going to find the information you, that you would seek, Mr. President. Having reached a general agreement, they were shown to the door by the president's guards. Without a chance to tell the rest of his crew what was going on, Cordet and Francis found themselves whisked up to a, a shuttle ship, and then to a prison ship, sitting out in space, a decent distance away from the planet, Xander, but uh, close by. They were greeted by a burly, giant-looking mouse that rumbled over to them and glared down from its height at them when they came into the ship, visiting the lobby. I am Warden George, and I have only just been told about your arrival. Something about seeing a prisoner, even though we don't do that sort of thing. All that came across the cordite, though, was a bunch of high-pitched squeaks. He tapped at his ear, trying to get his automatic translator to work. There were reportedly little fish inside of that device that did all kinds of work getting things understandable. But there were times when it went out of whack or would need to be updated, which was supposed to happen over the air, but at this moment things were just not going well. We are here at the request of the President of the Galactic Government, Sir George. Please show us to a room where we can talk to Captain Zoll. The warden grumbled, but pointed towards the doorway, which they all began heading for. My office will have to do, and this Zoll will be guarded by a lot of people all at all times. Cordite merely nodded along, still trying to get things done quickly and efficiently, as his earpiece still wasn't completely working, but was now catching things here and there. The large office space of the wardens was nice, but now had four other guards who all looked similar to the warden, though perhaps not as burly in appearance as they brought in the appropriate chairs and let everyone take them up. 
Then Zol was dragged in with an annoyed look on his face, which turned to a ragged grin when he saw Cordite. Well, if it isn't the bastard who now works for the government. Not officially, not yet anyway. Sorry, Zol. Uh, the galactic people will probably try and stop it if they can, or someone else might try to, I think. But, but we aren't here to speak about me. Oh, of course not. No, no, no. You wouldn't have that. The two guards that brought him in pushed Zol into a seat across from Cordite and Company. Their grip remained firmly on him, despite the cuffs and chains he was wearing. If any of this bothered Zol, he didn't seem to show it, as he got comfortable in his chair as best he could. You want to know why I attacked, I'm sure. If you could be so kind, we would like that very much. Zol shifted his gaze to appraise Francis, but then went right back to Cordite. The mighty smirk had never faded for a moment. Things needed to be tested out, and and I happen to know things. So by getting yourself in trouble and causing trouble for any future pirates who came into the area, uh, what was your test achieving? I was testing the government, because no government can ever be trusted by us. They hire us to do dirty work and then fail to recognize what we've done for them. That includes all planetary governments and even this galactic farce. I don't understand your motives at all. You're angry that they ignored you once you've done a job for them? No, I'm mad that this is allowed to happen. Also, they're hiding some grand thing from aliens in this system. It's a treasure worth many times what everyone else has. Plus, this allows me to put you, Cordite, in a tight spot. You now need to free me, or else the pirates won't like you. The warden offered a cough to get everyone's attention. What is this about a treasure? Vast amounts of rare ore and money hidden away on a planet. Or so the rumors say. You attack to get at this. That doesn't make any sense, Zol. Nothing you do makes sense lately. The smirk, having never left Zol's face, was making things aggravating as Cordite rose from his seat, ready for this to be over. Apologies for taking up your time, Warden. Don't bother listening to this one. He likes saying things while planning to undermine others to get goods. Uh, then there is this planet? Oh, uh, yes, well, no. There are rumors that have been around for ages, amongst pirates anyway. Even since I was a kid, there were whispers here and there about aliens and all types of going searching for it. Probably not worth the time and effort. Francis, who'd said this, got up and made his way towards the door, following Cordite out. Zul was being led back to his cell with Warden George, falling a few steps behind. They came up to his cell, and it opened automatically as he was shoved inside. None of his crew were around, but Zul wasn't terribly bothered by this, as the door slammed shut with the warden watching him from beyond. You want something, O oh warden? Perhaps what I know about this treasure planet? This planet of rumors and goods? What do you know? Plenty of l about lots of things. But that only comes with my freedom, and you'll need to convince some other people to free me and my crew if you want it. Or I can torture it out of you. Which do you think would be the easier option for me? I was trained with the Galactic Empire military, and know their basic tactics for torture. They're stupid enough to show in any conscript how to beat it. I doubt you've advanced much beyond the basics here. No need for you to try that route. Uh, you just imprison people here, and uh, you don't really know anything more than you need to know. Go ahead and think that, pirate. You can have all the time in the world to get that thought really deep into your mind. For now. But you should not assume things, as it won't end well for anyone. With a wave, the warden left as Zol leaned back into his bed. He was more than set to let things simmer, and for the idiots to realize they needed him. The transport between the prison ship and the planet touched down quickly at the spaceport. 
wasting no time, the duo were hurried inside a private cutoff area, just inside of the spaceport, where President Utility was pacing about with another alien, a cube of a shape, following him about. If it was an alien, Cordite couldn't tell as they were allowed to stand a few feet away from the presidential alien. Uh, well, from what we understand, he says he's after treasure that your government is hiding away. Or maybe another government. Well, it's not specific on that. My thought is that he's doing it for attention and using whatever stories and excuses to rile things up. Yes, as my associate says, especially the warden, who seems to have rather lost his love for the job. Utility looked at them, having heard them, but didn't say anything. His looks were more lost in thought and worry as the other creature, the cube, approached. Good evening. I am the cube helper Vix from the planet Vix Vax Vex. My job is to help guide aliens through tough situations, as has been presented before us. And what guidance are you, do we need, or are you offering in this cube? We are only here to advise this alien in charge. We care little for advice ourselves. The cube approached Francis and came within a few inches, showing the top of it. There at the top was a screen displaying a bunch of scrolling data. Well, for one thing, the best way to talk to an alien is to get them to understand you. The rough patterns of speech that you present do not lend itself well to greeting others and to getting things done. That's simply the way we talk. We want to be direct and get what is out there to be known. Less time for contrivances to come up. Oh, it's okay, Vix. They're a bit off sometimes, but it is for the best. Uh, do you have any recommendations, by the way, for how, what to do? Yes, do a change of the guards at the prison. Otherwise, anyone who heard the stories of treasure will get ideas. Any truth to that, by the way, Francis? Or is it all fiction? Or utility? Do you know anything about the rumored treasure planet? Utility gave Cordite and Francis a sharp look of displeasure at being questioned on the matter. A look that made it seem like they should know better. But one never knew, and it was better to get some answers on matters. Oh, there is more to life than rumors, and I have heard the stories, but no, I have no access to any such place. I would have used the resources for greater goods and made a better empire if I could. Then, if that is all you need from us, Mr. President, uh, are we free to head back to our own prison until decisions are made? This was greeted with a curt nod, which meant he dismissed them. Deciding that discussion was a smart move after the whole meeting debacle with, with the pirate leaders, Ophelia had went back to her ship. The captain's quarters felt like the only safe space, and the only area where she could really be alone. She was half-dressed and wandered about the area, trying to think about things. Her robot assistant, who kept things clean, was also busily moving about, trying to keep up with the mess she was making and leaving behind things here and there. I've never asked cleaner, but uh, are you attached to the central ship computer? Yes, in ways. I can sever the connection, though, if you should you want some privacy. No, no, as long as nothing is recorded, it should be fine. Besides, you both like to question me and why I should do things. It helps me when you do. Also, because the questions seem to come from the same place, uh, it's hard not to suspect that you are linked in the first place. Apologies for that. But yes, the theory drive likes to make sure that whoever is in control of a ship is fully capable, and in order to do that, they question things, and that their orders are at least questioned on some level. And what do you and it want to know about? She sat on her bed with a bit of a thump and looked over at the robotic, almost humanoid shape that had been chasing her about. Why would you nominate Ordite Mercury for the position that was designed for you? Everyone wants to talk about that. Jeez, it's simple. I need someone else there since I don't want the job. But it would be safer if you took it, correct? No, it would not. It's all about the pirates trying to get me away from doing what I love. Hunting ships and treasure. Cordite happened to fall in my lap but needed help. And so I gave him some. That's all there is to all of this. You put one of his crew in danger, though. 
She gave a sharp look to the robot, who had finished cleaning and was now standing in the center of the room, doing absolutely nothing. It turned to her and waited for any further orders. And Ophelia felt her mind spin for a second as she tried to rationalize this. Of course, the ship's private diary would be listened to by the ship's computer. Nothing here was truly private. Well, this cleaner robot acted as her private diary, so what was she to do? Um, that would put her in danger if she wasn't careful. But there was also a tingling feeling in that the risk of being found out was sort of exciting. Not that their crew would do anything much. Maybe another pirate captain, but that seemed unlikely. Hmm. This whole thing seemed to just be what it was for a moment. And then she remembered that she had been sort of questioned on whether or not that she put Cordite's crew members in danger. You mean Lion? Is that the one you're getting at? I didn't put him in danger, if that's what you're asking. Yes, you seem to have been a bit fond of the big creature. A moment passed as she figured out where her heart lie on that matter. There was no simple answer, and thoughts swelled into other thoughts all mixing together. And whether or not she did or didn't, and the answer was yes, she liked him, but how far that actually went, well, it wasn't easy to say. A chance had to be taken, and anyway, I would be no safer there than I would be here, so any feelings I have or had did not play into any of my decisions, and I did not put him in much danger, not yet at least. Are you sure you didn't? Yes, quite sure that is the way things are. There was no danger of him getting tangled up in anything that I have been up to, since he is now safely far away, after he helped rescue me. Very well, and what shall we do next? It appears staying here is a bad idea, since the other pirates are probably up to something. Oh, they're always up to something. She got up from the bed, stretching and looking for something to get changed into. They weren't going to be leaving port right away, and there were some potential other meetings to be had. This, of course, required some fine clothes, which, looking at her closet, didn't provide the best options. Computer, what is the best good clothes shop within the space station, or any of the other surrounding ones? Oh, several. Are you planning something? You already know the answer to that. As always, we are always planning, and I'm looking for a specific shop, if you don't mind. The grand and well-maintained dining room of the presidential ship guards was a bustle of activity since Evok had entered. He should be the only one to be served in here because it was made to be a nice place to relax. Only for him. Except, for some reason, all that this situation was going on, and he couldn't figure out why there were now so many sailors in his private dining room aboard what was supposed to be his private ship. What is going on here? Uh, we are preparing for your maiden voyage, sir. You wanted it to be as memorable as possible. Evok froze up for a second, having not thought about that at all. He hosted dinners here before, but it was true that this would be the first space flight to cross the galaxies. I don't need all of this, though. Oh, oh, yes, well, um, um, did no one tell you? Tell me what? Oh, several dignitaries were uh, invited aboard, and they are expecting a grand reception, sir. Well, uh, them and several ambassadors and some of the galactic government and uh, some naval people, I assume? Uh, that's all I was told. The pit of Evok's stomach felt like it had curled into a tight ball of pain. It flipped inside, then out, and never really settling down. This was supposed to be a trip only for him, and the only people who could have changed that were the king and queen. But he was on their good side, wasn't he? There was no time to question that, 
since all of this was already happening and, well, they had already launched the ship and were traveling through space. And pray tell, where might I find these lovely diplomats being kept? There was a shrug of, I don't know that kind of information from the worker. Oh, this guest would be in the guest quarters area, maybe, sir? I, I'm sorry, I, I don't know, Mr. President. Fine, I will go search them out myself. He spun on his heel, and being not far away from the door, exited the room. A step outside of the dining room brought Evok into a hallway and face to face with one of the diplomats, and one he was not remotely familiar with. The gelatinous being that seemed to wobble about in a blob like form, and kept and it sort of kept changing shapes. Evok drew back a step to make sure he did not step on it or get sucked into it. Ah, uh, hello, who are you? Blob, Prince Blob, Ambassador of the Nine Gates of Humor and Distaste. Welcome aboard, I suppose. I don't think I've heard of that place. Is it somewhere new, recently discovered, or something like that? Is it part of the Grogian Empire? No, it's old as dirt. I came to see you about another matter, one of which I've heard rumors on. There was a familiar feeling from Evox Scott that made it ball up with anticipation. And what would that be, Prince, sir? The galactic people seem to have too much control, and us regulars not nearly enough. It is time a group broke away and did their own thing, don't you agree? A a dangerous endeavor, and one that is not likely to succeed without the right group behind them. Yes, and I have heard rumors that uh, you are up to things, and that's why I'm here, to talk to you in private. The instant question of how much this creature did or did not know came to Evok in that moment. How much could he trust this one? And he figured not much, since he had just met it. What to reveal and what to hold back, his mind couldn't decide on. Oh, um, by the way, is this just you talking, or do you have a cadre of companions who are working on this with you? This time it was the Blob's turn to look at him suspiciously. Though this was a bit of a difficult task, since the eyes it had kept floating about, going down to the side, to the right, back up, and all around. The Blob could not hold them still. An appropriate group of helpers who are seeking out those that they believe in. And if you make a wrong step, and ask the wrong person, hmm... Does your plan disappear, or are, or do the people you are trying to get bored with this vanish when they find out that you're not everything you say you are? The blob began to move away rapidly, while managing to actually keep an eye on the president. Don't mistake me, Mr. Prince Blob. I work in my own interest, and not that of your enemy. That said, I need to know what might occur should I make a choice in your direction. You will never know. You cannot know unless you are willing to cooperate. Prince Blob left it at that and hurried off, leaving Evok alone before another sailor came up. Soldier, which way to the area where the guests are aboard this ship? The sailor jumped in surprise and looked about for a moment, trying to recollect which way to go. This way, sir, if you don't mind. Following the sailor, they went a few feet down the hallway to another connecting hallway. There, the sailor pointed towards the various doors in this section. These rooms should all have quarters to various diplomats, I such, I think. We were told to avoid this space. Yeah, pretty sure this is the area you wanted. His helper quickly vanished off into the distance, which meant Evok was free to do as he wished, and he went up to the first door he could see. He promptly knocked on it. There was a moment before its fish had opened, and out came Vice President Vic, looking curious and wanting to know who was knocking on his door. What are you doing here? Never mind before you even answer that. Let's talk about some stuff privately in your room. 
Before Vic could complain or say much beyond what, Evok pushed him back inside the room. Athena didn't take too long before she was back out on the space station at the shopping section of this place. It wasn't extravagant by any means, mostly set up for ship parts, but there were a few good places, while dabbling with a few other goods. She found her way towards those, hidden away in a back alley, and then in front of several shops, and all said they sold clothes. At least that's what the signs above them proclaimed. Truthfully, they might have an item or two of clothing while selling other goods for those who are looking for them. Stark, which shop was it again? I know they keep changing locations, and I keep getting the name of which one it is. Her guard stepped beside her and pointed to the one to the right. That one, and we really trust in this? Trust? No, but it will lead to interesting things, and that is what pirates are all about, right? He sighed as they went towards the front door of the place, and as he stepped in front of her so he could open the door for her. The tiny shop they went into called itself gold, but nothing that resembled that color was anywhere around here. There were a few pieces of clothing that lay on some shelves, but nothing else. Ophelia picked up what looked to be a nice-looking dress and then made her way towards the back of the store where a person sat looking rather bored with the whole thing. She dropped the dress onto the counter when she got there and then dropped her charge card on top of that. This drew a look from the person. You want to buy something? Yes, and more. The card was picked up, examined, then swiped through the machine. Welcome to the establishment. Keep your head down, don't make much noise. The card was handed back as the checkout counter split apart and then dropped downwards. She grabbed up the dress before it fell into the secret passageway that would lead downward that had revealed itself. Is Charles in or no? I don't know. She didn't like the sound of that, but with her guards stark leading the way, down they went, with the counter closing behind them. The glitzy room with the gambling tables, slot machines, and other gambling enterprises greeted them once they passed another door. Ophelia had to flash the card and the dress before they would open up for them, but now that it was, there was lots of music and a jumping atmosphere in this place. The crowds, valiants, enjoyed themselves with whatever they were up to, though. I don't like it here. Neither do I, but we have to do dirty things to get jobs, and I've heard rumors about a job and some mysterious other things. They made their way, undisturbed, through the swaths of the crowd towards the back of the room where two security guards stood. She flashed the card once again, and it was taken up by one of them who carefully examined it. Then it was slid into a hole in the wall, allowing another secret door to appear. I'm looking for Charles. Is he here? Neither of the alien guards responded to her request for information, and she passed through with her guard following. They both looked at the guards to see if there was any signs of life beyond that. The automaton-like appearance giving hints that at best they could only follow orders. Now in the back hallway of sorts, Ophelia took a long look around at the employees who were here. None of them were paying attention to them, and they were all moving about in a hurry. I doubt they want to answer any of your questions, but to press on. It would be easier if we knew where our friends were. The usual spots, dark rooms away from prying eyes, which is why we're here. Why do you need to see them, though? Rumors of goods and that can be stolen and treasure. What else do you think? Plus some connections to save us from the hordes that dislike what I'm doing. I think the only person who might be on your side at this moment is the person you put in charge of being an ambassador. Well, it is a good thing to have done that, then. We could be more careful with your plans. She rolled her eyes and looked over at him with an exasperated look. There is hidden treasure out there, and you want to move slowly, carefully? That's what got us into trouble on the last time we got into trouble. We were too slow and too careful. 
Usually things occur the other way around, don't they? With a shrug, they were moving down the hallway, but being careful not to get into anyone's way or to really be overheard. Ophelia found herself looking for the door, though she wasn't sure which one it would be. There was a good chance that her contact wouldn't be her at all, and she snarled at that thought. Ophelia, what are you doing here? She snapped her head to the right, at the door that she'd gone past a few rooms back. There stood Court, half in and half out of a door with a stack of files in his hands. Looking for Charles, but you will have to do for what I need. What do you need of me for? Rumors and stories of treasure. He nodded and stepped aside to let them into the room as they came towards him. You're right that Charles would be who you'd want for that job, but I can help a bit. What exactly is the rumor? Oh, you know it, and everyone knows it. A hidden treasure put in a safe spot by the pirate family Zul. A smile spread across the square face of the court as they stepped into the office. End of Book 1, Part 6 of Pirates, Politics, and Potentially Treasure Thank you for listening.